Good morning. I'd like you to welcome you this morning to our daily devotion time. As we come to the Lord to start out our day, we want to unpack for you just a little bit in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verses 11 through 14. The Apostle Paul wrote, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. This morning we want to remember those who are struggling. Folks in the western part of our great state here of North Carolina, they still have lots going on and I want to say uh, that I'm so thankful for Franklin Graham and the Samaritan person, all that they do to help. They have been wonderful here in our state, and I'm so thankful for that, as they are in so many states when disaster comes. Let's continue to remember those uh, in Afghanistan, not only the children of God that are suffering and will suffer greatly, but all those there that are suffering. For we all were created in the image of God. Let's remember one another. Father, we want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for the privilege to be able to share of your word, to unpack, Father, as the Holy Spirit would grant us understanding. I'm so thankful for who you are in our lives. Thankful for the church that you so wonderfully blessed us with to be able to lead, Father, according to the precepts of your word and the leadership of the Holy Spirit in my life. Father, I pray that you would remember these that are suffering greatly. Many in our western part of our state are suffering, Lord, and uh, in the Gulf Coast and Middle East and all over the world. Father, truly, we live in days that are leading closer and closer to the climax of history. Lord, it shall not be long, and Lord, I pray, Father, help us to do all that we can. Prepare our hearts, Lord, to do all we can to share. For Lord, we know and we ask for thee to send thy son to take your people, Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Now, God has given us this wonderful inheritance. He has chosen us. And there's some significant points that I would like to share with you about this this morning. The inheritance or the heritage was predestined, first of all, that is, foreordained. God works all things out after the counsel of his own will. He must. This is an imperative for only God knows what is best in my life and in yours. And nothing could be better than to be given the greatest inheritance possible. That of being made the very heritage of God, the very possession of God. Now, secondly, the inheritance is clearly stated in the words that we should be, that is, exist eternally. God gives the believers an eternal state of being, an eternal existence. In fact, the word inheritance means heritage. God takes the believer and makes his own heritage and possession. He is, he is given the glorious privilege of being. 
of existing forever as God's most cherished possession and heritage. He becomes the most precious gem and treasure of God. That's who you and I are. The gems of God. This is the believer's inheritance. Our heritage. In Deuteronomy, the scripture says, Yet they are thy people in thine inheritance, which thou broughtest out by thy mighty power, by thy stretched out arm. Thirdly, the reason God makes us his inheritance is that we should exist to praise his glory. We shall live forever in the new heavens and earth as the perfect demonstration of his glory. The fact that God would take sinners, I'm, I'm totally depraved sinners, and save them will cause praise upon praise to be heaped upon his name. His unbelievable love. Whew, glory. And it is unbelievable. Will be seen and glorified forever and ever by all of his creation. Both heaven and earth. Both visible, invisible. Both now and yet to be. All shall stand in stark amazement of God's spectacular glory, the glory of his eternal grace and love that is shown to the world in his son, Christ Jesus. The book of Hebrews tells us, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Yes, Lord. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Thank you, Lord. Fourthly, how does a person receive the inheritance? Now here in verse 13, it tells us those two ways. First of all, by hearing the word. Hearing the word of God, a person has to hear the word of God before he can ever know the truth. The glorious gospel of salvation. He cannot believe, you cannot believe, I cannot believe in Jesus unless we first hear about Christ. In Romans it says, so then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And secondly, by believing and trusting in Jesus. What did Jesus tell, tells us in John chapter 5? Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, he hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Now, in order for an inheritance to be realized, someone has to die. For our benefit and for his glory, our father gave up his son to die. Consequently, those who are in Christ have become his most precious possession. Now, what is our part in this glorious transaction? We must claim, we must claim it to be ours. Through God's infinite wisdom, he has given his son as an inheritance. Because of God's mercy and God's grace, we have been made joint heirs with the son. I want to share with you a story that I read. Of, and it's a striking story of how one man received his inheritance. There was a man who was blessed with wisdom and virtue and wealth, and he had only one son. He offered him the best education, 
sent him to Jerusalem to learn, and he made certain that this young man's every need was met. Now, shortly after the son had left home to further his education, the father became sick and he died. Now, his death caused immense grief throughout the community. For he was a great benefactor, both the rich and poor. Now, when the period of mourning was over, the dead man's executor opened the man's will and he read it aloud. And to the astonishment of everyone, the man left all of his property and wealth to his slave. Now there was one final clause that his beloved son should have the privilege of choosing only one thing out of the entire estate. Now, immersed in grief over the loss of the father, the young man had asked his teacher to assist him in selecting one thing from his father's estate. Now, in the meantime, the slave began to live the life of a wealthy man. Now, when the teacher read the will, he at once discovered the intention of the father. And he said to the young man, we must leave it once for your home. Because that's where you will take possession of all of your property. And the boy cried out, but I'm just a pauper. All I have is the clothes on my back and one item from my father's house. The teacher said, I suggest that you choose your late father's slave out of his estate and with him will go over to you all he possesses since a slave can own nothing and all he has belongs to his master now that indeed was the fa father's clever device here because he knew that if the will were to state that he had left all to the son the slave in the son's absence would take for himself all the valuables on which he could lay his hands. Whereas if he thought that all belonged to him, he would take care of all that was left. So the teacher said, now you know what? Your father knew that the one thing he gave you the power to choose would be no other than his slave. And with him, you would become the just and rightful owner of everything. Now, this young man's father was very clever, but our Heavenly Father is even wiser. I want to ask you, have you claimed your inheritance? Have you surrendered your life to God? Have you asked for forgiveness from the Father? And as we look on here at these last couple of verses in the passage this morning, we come across a word called earnest. Now that word earnest means pledge, guarantee, a down payment. Now the Holy Spirit is given to the believer, to you and to I, if we have surrendered our lives to the Lord, uh, in order to give us perfect assurance of his salvation. Now we know that we are redeemed, that we are God's cherished possession by the Holy Spirit who lives within us. Now why does God give us such a glorious guarantee as his own wonderful presence that his glory might be praised eternally? Now the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit as to what? That we are the children of God. I'm going to ask you something. It may sound a little silly, but I'll ask you. Have you ever heard of, of a layaway plan? For example, a dollar down will secure your layaway for Christmas. Now this phrase is spoken in hundreds of stores as merchandise will be set aside until it has been paid for in full. Now, if payments are made 
on a timely basis, then the customer will pick up the merchandise and is finally able to enjoy what has been previously laid away. And of course, for a variety of reasons, there'll be some that fail to make the scheduled payments and consequently, they lose what they wanted. In the same sense, God has a layaway program. However, his program is a guaranteed payment for the believer. In fact, we are not allowed to pay on anything that he has done. The cross took care of it all. And the most wonderful thing has happened. Think about it. The Holy Spirit has been given to us given as a pledge or a down payment of God's great promise that we shall live forever with him. Now, are you laying away things for this earth or treasures for heaven? Material things, position, pride, none of these things are allowed in heaven. Do you remember what Jesus said in Matthew 6? Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves will break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where is your tre for where your treasure is, there will you be your heart also. Now. Where is knowledge leading you today? Remember, knowledge shouldn't be an end within itself, but it is to lead the believer into a deeper relationship with the Lord. As we know him better, we will better understand the things that he has done for us and what he requires of us. Now, God has given us wisdom, understanding, revealed the mystery of his will to us, has given us an inheritance. That is, he's made us a heritage of himself. God has sealed us with the Holy Spirit. Now, as you go through this beautiful Tuesday, I want to ask you to ponder just a few things. Are you acutely aware of the Holy Spirit's presence in your life? This is important. What difference does knowing that you're truly saved affect how you witness to the lost? And I want to share with you this morning, if I may, as a man or a woman of God, someone who has been to the cross, someone who has met the man they call the Christ, if you are not sharing, and I'm talking a sharing to the lost, you, you, you can share your testimony in church and that's wonderful. It's great to share with the brethren, but if you're not sharing with the lost, what benefit is your testimony? What benefit? Father, we want to say thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for who you are in our lives. Thank you for your word, for the privilege to be able to unpack just a little and share. Father, help us to be about thy business. Use us in the name of Christ. Amen.